Hey guys, I'm Lucas, welcome to a KNews special about nuclear thermal propulsion. Many including NASA are currently talking about the future journey to Mars, not least because of the movie The Martian. I digged a little into the topic and was surprised NASA is actually considering to use nuclear thermal rockets going to Mars. That is something which is very little talked about as far as I'm concerned and I understand using the words nuclear and rocket in the same context is probably not the best way to get people excited about such a mission. I think many of you already know about it, but I still hope I can help someone with it. Please note I am not a physicist nor rocket scientist, so take it with a grain of salt. In the background you will see me assembling a craft which was derived from the Constellation program which was cancelled in 2010. It was meant to bring humans to Mars and I think a future mission won't look much different. I will use NASA's space launch system as a launcher which got its design changed recently and I have edited the texture files to match its look. Ok, let's go. The easiest way to explain nuclear thermal propulsion in my opinion is to first look at the general idea behind propulsion itself and for that one can use a very familiar case, the shower head. If you take a shower and drop it, it goes all over the place and the bath becomes a mess. But why is it? Well, water rushes through it and pushes the head in the opposite direction of where the water is shooting. The water rushes through it because of the high pressure inside the water pipes. This pressure basically presses the water out and the principle is the same when propelling a rocket. It shoots the fuel out of the nozzle to produce thrust and the higher the pressure or exhaust speed for that matter, the higher the thrust. If you wanted to keep the thrust steady while increasing the pressure, you had to reduce the fuel intake, which means a rocket engine gets more efficient the higher its exhaust speed is. However, you won't get very far by simply pumping the fuel out of the nozzle. Pumps are just not strong enough to do the job, so other methods are needed. The most commonly used one is a chemical reaction of two elements. Just think of a barbecue where you use coal to heat up your steaks. Coal is made out of carbon and reacts with oxygen in the atmosphere to form CO2. This reaction happens in the flame and I won't go into much detail here, but important to know is it causes movement. The CO2 molecules gain speed from this reaction, it accelerates them. They get so fast they can actually damage your skin bumping into it and cause pain which we feel as heat. Enclosing many of such accelerated molecules inside a chamber causes a pressure and it can be released through such a nozzle. And guess what? This is exactly what a rocket engine does. A typical engine is built like that. On top sit the fuel tanks which in this case hold liquid hydrogen in blue and oxygen in white. Below sits the turbo pump which is needed to pump enough fuel inside the reaction chamber. I obviously neglect many other parts, which for example are necessary to measure the pressure inside the chamber so it doesn't blow up, but I hope I can still give you a good overview with this rough description. So the fuel is pumped inside the chamber out of many such needles, where it reacts with each other. Here a little close up. Hydrogen and oxygen react to water mon uh, I mean water. It gets accelerated, bumps all over the place until it finds the nozzle and rushes as water vapor through it, pushing the rocket up. Great Scott! The similarities between this and a shower head are astonishing. Now back to nuclear propulsion. As many of you probably know, nuclear energy is used on Earth to produce electricity. This is done by heating and boiling up water and using the water vapor to drive turbines which again generate electric voltage. But wait a second. Water vapor, heat, that should already sound a little familiar. A nuclear thermal engine is nothing but a power plant. Instead of heating up water, it heats up the fuel, which again increases the pressure but without a regular chemical reaction. This explains why it only needs one type of propellant. It is built like so. The single fuel tank sits on top again, which is hydrogen. It's the lightest element and can therefore be accelerated easier than others. Below you see the turbo pump and now comes the difference. Behind a heavy shield against the radiation, the fuel is split into thinner pipes which are surrounded by nuclear fuel material. These produce a lot of heat, which I don't dare to explain, but I will link you some information about it as well if you're interested in how it works. The heat is absorbed by the ice cold hydrogen as it passes it. The accelerated hydrogen is then combined inside the chamber again where the pressure adds up and the only way out of course is the nozzle. That's basically it. The idea itself is not so complicated I think. But why are these engines so much more efficient? 
It's because of the fuel. Since these only accelerate hydrogen, the total exhaust speed is higher, due to hydrogen being lighter than water for example. Another advantage of such nuclear engines is they can be used to generate power without actually firing them. This would work like a regular power plant and would make them independent from solar energy, which decreases on the way to Mars considerably because it's farther away from the Sun. Without mounted solar panels, generating artificial gravity also becomes much more easy. Instead of having a rotating ring, the entire vehicle going to Mars could rotate around its center of mass. Now in the end I want to show you how such nuclear fuel cells can look like in reality. They come in such hexagon shaped cylinders, in which a lot of tiny pipes are integrated. This is where the hydrogen rushes through, and the material those cylinders are made of is fueled with radioactive urine. This means tiny radioactive particles are mixed into it, and it's not a solid block of radioactive material only. Like this the heat output of each cell is set. Putting all cells together, they heat each other up in a chain reaction which can be controlled with such movable shields which are integrated into the structure. This is very similar to regular power plants by the way. Spinning the shields around reduces their reflectivity. This means the reaction inside comes to a stop. This shielding could be applied in steps which would be necessary to throttle the engine. The less fuel you pump inside, the smaller the amount of energy needed to heat it up. Okay. I hope I was able to showcase how nuclear thermal propulsion works and why it might be used at all. For all of you who already knew it, I hope you still enjoyed it. Feel free to ask me anything, but please keep in mind I'm not a physicist. Just by the way, the craft which just arrived at Mars, or Duna for that matter, is just the habitat that the humans will travel in. Two additional crafts of similar size would be needed to bring the cargo to Mars as well. That's it for this episode and I hope to see you in the next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.